Hello scholars, welcome to class. For those who might be new, my name is Miss Alicia. For those who are returning, hi, I miss you guys. I miss having you in the classroom. I look forward to the day when we are back in the classroom doing things in person with each other. In the meantime, I'm gonna be coming to you virtually a couple times a week for the next few weeks at least because we're scheduled to be back in May. So for now, we will be going over lessons that I have here for you today. So today we're gonna to be doing something really cool. Um, it's called op art, and op art is basically short for optical illusion. Um, I'm gonna tell you exactly what we need to start this lesson. So the first thing you're gonna need is a piece of paper, a regular piece of paper. I'm going to be working on a larger piece of paper just so that you can see what I'm doing, but this is the paper that you'll need. Just your regular sketching paper. So that's the first thing you'll need. The second thing you'll need is a drawing pencil and an eraser. So pencil and an eraser. I, for the sake of your sight, am gonna be using a Sharpie marker so that you can see what I'm doing, but everything that I draw with Sharpie, you should be doing with pencil, okay? And the eraser is just in case you need to erase something on the way, right? I have either a Sharpie or my black marker. All of you should have a black marker. I have a Sharpie, that's gonna, what I'm gonna be using to do my outlines. You can use whatever you have. The other thing we're gonna need is a ruler because this is gonna involve some straight lines. And then last but not least, something to color with. I'm going to be using markers. You can use crayons or markers. You can also use colored pencils. I wouldn't recommend colored pencils just because they'll take really long for this project. So I would suggest that you maybe have um, markers or crayons. Those are the best options. I'm just gonna put my markers down for now because we're not getting into coloring right away. All right, so pencil and eraser and your piece of paper is what you should have right now. All of you should be on a flat table surface. I'm only standing so that you can see what I'm doing and follow through. So I'm gonna start with my marker. You're starting with your pencil and you're gonna find a point on your paper. So it could be the center, or it could be a little bit out of the center. So I'm gonna to try to get as close to the center as possible, and I'm just gonna create a little point or a little circle. You're seeing it as a little tiny dot. So it's super small, but you're basically just using your pencil to create a dot or a center point for our design. All right, so I wanna give everybody a minute or so to do that. Once we have our point, we're gonna move on to the next step, which requires a ruler and your pencil. For me, it's the Sharpie, but it's just so you could see what I'm doing. So you should have a ruler and your pencil, right? That's what we're gonna be doing next. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna take my ruler, and I want you to think of this point almost like a sun. You know how when we draw um, the sun, in maybe the corner of a paper and then we do rays around it this point is going to act as the sun and what we're going to do now is draw big rays all the way around it covering the entire paper with lines and i'm going to show you exactly what i mean so i'm going to take my ruler first and i'm going to go from this point to maybe the corner and i'm going to draw a line going that way on an angle all right i'm going to come to this side and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now you don't have to do your lines in the same order or way that I'm doing mine. This is just a general idea. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is come right in the center and I'm gonna create a line here, right? Then I'm gonna come maybe here Create another line. So you can kind of freestyle this and decide where your lines are gonna go. Right, you could start with a big X in the center as well. I'm just gonna turn this around so that I can get my lines on the bottom. All right, then I'm gonna come over here. So all together, honestly, everybody's gonna have a different amount of lines. All together, everybody should have, and remember your paper is a lot smaller than mine. This is just a bigger example. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven lines. I'm going to do another one down the center here. So all together, we're going to have somewhere between eight and 10 lines. So I'm going to go ahead and create a line there. I'm going to create a line here. And one right here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines, right? You might have eight, you might have seven. It doesn't have to be a specific number. The idea is you have a point, so the center point, right? So I have the center point, and then I have rays coming outside of that center point, right? Because this is recorded, at any point, if I'm moving too fast, you can just pause it and then restart when you're ready to move to the next stop step. So I'm just gonna keep moving. The next thing I'm gonna do, so I have the point here, I'm keeping my center point, and now I have 10 of these long triangles, or sun rays, if you will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into each one of these now, and I'm going to create curved lines. So the first one, I'm never gonna start right at the point. I'm always gonna come right above the point. So I'm gonna start here, right? So that's kind of small, but as they go bigger, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna create another line right next to it. So this is gonna be one area. Then I'm gonna come a little bit above it. And notice these are not straight lines. They're all curved in a little bit. And this is what's gonna help with the optical illusion. Right, so I have one, two, three, and you'll see why I'm saying three later on when we get ready to color. Notice my curves are going out toward the paper in this triangle. And I'm gonna go just as far as I can. So that's gonna be the end of this one. Right, so I have, if I count the spaces in between one, two, three, four, five areas I'm gonna end up coloring in. Let me just make this a little bit thicker. I wanna make sure you guys can see it. So I hope you are all doing well at home with your distance learning. Um, I'm hoping everybody is in good spirits. I am, I've been spending my entire time at home and in my studio creating and um, doing lessons and a lot of other really cool things. So I hope you guys are being good and weathering the storm as well as you can. Okay, so now that we have this first triangle done, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the next one. The next one, my curves are gonna go in the opposite direction though. So it's gonna go this way, right? So instead of going up toward the edges of the paper, the curve is coming to the center. And I'm basically going right next to what I already created. And in this triangle, all of my curves will be going toward the center. And I'm matching it to the curve that's already there. So you can actually start directly from this line. That way it matches up. All right, so hopefully you're seeing what that is. So now I'm gonna come to my next triangle and I'm going to do the same exact thing, but it's going to be now going toward the paper, right? So the curve, the outside of the curve is going out. So notice it's gonna be almost like, when I go all the way around the center, it's gonna be almost like a, like a squiggly line that goes throughout the center of it. So I'm gonna do this to all of my triangles now. So go ahead and go along with me. If I'm moving too fast, just take pause and come back. Okay, so these are going to the outside of the paper. These are coming into the paper, outside of the paper. 
So the next one is going to be just like this one. So basically every other one, that's the idea of this. So now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna to go toward the center, matching the lines that I've already created on, my, on the triangle right next to it. Okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm gonna come this one is going to be um, going out toward the paper, right? So when I say out toward the paper, I mean the edges. So I'm going to come here again, matching my center. Now you all are using your pencils for this, but if you want, if you feel comfortable using the marker, you can use the marker. I'm going to come next to this and again, go the opposite. So I am going in the opposite direction. So I thought Optical Illusion would be um, a really cool first virtual assignment because that's kind of what the world feels like right now. Like things are a little weird and uh, very different than what we're used to. And so this, this assignment I felt kind of matched that. Um, so I wanted to do something really cool and fun to kind of take our minds off of things. It has kind of like a hypnotic feel to it. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to do the same thing. Remember, we're going opposite. So every other one is going to be opposite. So whatever, whatever's next to it, you want to make sure the, the curves are going the other way. And I know your paper is a lot smaller than mine, but you're gonna have a similar, you're gonna have a similar result. So now this one is going in toward the center. And then I'll just do an extra one there. Right, I'm almost finished. We are at the home stretch. This one is gonna come out. We are in the home stretch just for lines. And then we finish these lines and the fun part starts. And that's gonna be basically adding the color. Right, so we have this one piece now and it is going to come this way. And you wanna to try to match it to the line next to it, even if it's a little bit, like these are a little bit wider, that's okay. So basically, this is what we have. It looks almost like uh, a spider web. It's very similar to that of a spider web, except a spider web, all of the lines go the same way in each one. Um, spiders are very meticulous in the way that they create. So we could think of this as our spider web optical illusion because it's very similar to a spider web. Okay, so now that we have this beautiful line to work with, um, you can actually take some time now to go over them with your black marker. I would recommend waiting until the end because if you don't have a Sharpie and you have um, one of these, so if you're using this as a black marker, right, these tend to run into each other because they're washable markers. So you wanna make sure um, if it's a regular black marker, you wait until the very end I'm not gonna be using black to color this, but what I'm going to do is use the colors of the rainbow because if you remember, you know that I love color. Um, it's actually my, one of my favorite things in the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my markers up here because I'm about to color and I'm just gonna put them on my easel top, right? And rainbows actually have usually seven colors. Um, I'm going to be using six today right which will leave me with four extras right because if i have 10 compartments i am going to have six different um six i have, I have six that are going to be the colors i have here and then i'm just going to bring the colors back in so i'm going to repeat some colors right so i'm going to start with red red is the first color of the rainbow 
So whether you're using markers or crayons, it really doesn't matter. Either way, you just wanna make sure you have something um, good to color with. So I'm gonna start with this one right at the top. And I'm gonna use my markers. When you color with markers, if you're using markers, don't scribble like this, because when you scribble, it makes the ink run out of your marker faster. I'm gonna start with this center triangle on this triangle, and I'm only coloring this triangle right now. I'm not touching any other one. Now, I'm coloring every other, every other curve. So red here, I'm gonna skip and leave that white. And then when I tell you line by line, this is what I mean. So I'm not scribbling, I'm taking my time, going up and down, and I'm going line by line. Right, so now I have red, white, red. I'm gonna leave this white and this one is going to be red. So I'm coming in now. And I am, remember I'm using markers, so I'm taking my time and kind of going line by line with it instead of rushing because when you rush through it and scribble, not only does it come out a little messy, but also you don't get, you start to run out of ink in your marker. So. So now I have red, white, red, white, red, white. So notice this is a pattern now. I'm skipping everyone in between. Now I'm gonna come to this larger one and I'm gonna go ahead and color this as well. Right, so I'm taking my time. Just making sure I have all these little white areas that I want. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can actually leave some spacing in your coloring. Everybody has a different style. I encourage you to do this in your own style of coloring. Um, the only thing that I do say is be careful with the markers because you do wanna preserve the life of the markers. And if you press too hard, or too fast, you can lose your ink or even the tip of the marker, right? So I'm telling you to be very careful in that way, but now I have red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, and this very last one is going to be red. And I'm gonna color this one in a different direction, still line to line. I'm coloring this one in a different direction just because I have it pinned to this easel, so I'm not on a table and I don't have the same level of freedom, so I'm just gonna do it this way to get the color on there. All right, so we have every other one now. <clears throat> don't forget when you finish with your marker, put the top back on it. You wanna preserve the life on it. So I'm putting the top back on, putting this down. Next color in the rainbow is orange. So I'm gonna actually come right next to my red and I'm not gonna do the same thing here. So pay very close attention because yes, I'm gonna color every other one, but the difference here is I'm gonna color the one with what's white here will be in color here. So the same way we did opposite with curve, we're gonna do the same thing here. So I have red here. I don't wanna put orange right here. I'm gonna actually put orange right here. It's still next to the red, right? But it is going to be the in-between. So red, white, white, orange. So I'm gonna create a pattern now in this particular triangle, right? So I have my red triangle already and now I'm gonna come into the orange one and I'm gonna do every other one. So white, orange, white, orange. And I'm coloring fast but I'm still going line by line by line. I'm not pressing hard. I want, I want to really stress the importance, and I told you this in class before, stress the importance of preserving your supplies, right? You want to definitely respect your supplies. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip this one, come to this one, Right, so white, orange, white, orange, white, orange, white. 
orange. All right, and then you could come back in. I have, like I said, these little areas of white at the top. You could come back in and just nicely color over those. And then I have this extra one up here. I gotta come up here, I'm skipping this one and coming up to this very top one and adding orange to it. And the top and bottom is gonna be a little bit different because I, like I said, I don't have the same reach as I do with these. So now that's our second area, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, remember, put the top on. You wanna make sure you keep it in good shape. Yellow might be a little harder for you guys to see, but yellow is the next color in the rainbow. And I'm going to mirror my red, right? So again, I'm gonna start, because red started at the point, I'm gonna do the same thing with yellow. I'm gonna skip this one, right? That's white, I'm gonna leave that white, and then I'm gonna to come to the next one, yellow. Skip this one. So do you see the pattern that's developing here? We're creating a pattern. And I know we've, we've talked about patterns in class before, so I know you all know what patterns are. Um, and they will come up in some of the other virtual lessons that I give to you. I know that's really light, but you'll see the in-between. So I'm basically going on the opposite of the orange. So I'm not coloring the same ones as the orange. And you'll see the pattern repeat again when we get to the next color. So the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, is actually seven colors. And Roy G. Biv is red, orange, right? So it's an acronym. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. That's what the colors stand for. So there's actually two different blues and indigo is almost like purple and blue together. I only have six of those colors today, so that's what I'm gonna be working with. All right, so I'm almost finished with my yellow. I'm gonna come here. Same thing, notice with my markers, I'm still going line by line. I'm going pretty fast, but I'm not pressing too hard. I'm making sure I'm being respectful of the supplies. You know how important that is because you want them to stick around for your other assignments. You don't want to mess them up. All right, so same thing. I'm going to put the top on my yellow, put it aside because now I'm finished with those three colors. Red, orange, yellow, green is going to be my next color. So I'm going to come in with green. And remember, I'm skipping this. So the same way we're skipping going this way, I'm skipping one in between here too. So yellow, I'm gonna skip this, and the second line is gonna be green. So red, orange, yellow, green is where we are now. Notice white, green, white. So just like the others, I'm skipping I'm skipping the ones in between. So by now, I think everybody has an idea. You should have an idea of the pattern that we are creating. You can create your own color scheme. Now, I'm doing the rainbow, but maybe you want to stick with one color, right? Maybe you just want blue. So you would just do the opposite, right? So it would be blue here, blue here. It's the same color, but you do. It works better with different colors, but... You can do it this way, it's completely fine. If you want one color, two colors, you don't want as many colors as I'm working with, that is okay. It is not a requirement to have too many colors. So it's always good to have at least two colors though. So if you've, if you've decided on one color, you might wanna add a second one. It will still work with one. Right, so now I've done green. Now green is less because it's on the side, so I don't have as many rows to color with the green, so that went really fast. Next color, remember the one of the first questions I asked you guys in class was your name and what your favorite color was. If you remember, my favorite color is blue. So blue is probably a color that will pop up more than once in this drawing. Okay, so now I'm gonna come to this next row. I'm doing it in the same, in the same order. 
red, orange, yellow, green, blue. This one is gonna be blue. I'm gonna leave this one, I'm gonna actually color this one blue. This one is gonna stay white, right? Again, because it's the opposite of what's in front of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and color this blue. Skip this one. Right. So it's blue, white, blue, blue, white, blue, white. Then I'm going to come straight to this one and color this one in. So whatever you're using to color, colored pencils, crayons, same exact thing. Colored pencils, crayons, marker, same thing. The only thing is with, with crayons, you don't have to be as uh, forgiving as you do with markers. Markers, you have to take your time and you'll lose all your ink. Right, so I'm doing the blue now. Right, I'm gonna skip this one. And then I'm gonna come down here. Not the same reach, but you get the idea. So I'm coloring this. And I'm actually pressing on the sides because you get a wider, when you're coloring with the markers, like I was using the tip before, but because I'm lower down and I have a different reach here, I'm using the actual side of the marker, which gives you a wider angle of color. Now, you might be asking if you can do patterns instead of solid color. You can. It works better with solid color, but if you want to do patterns, you can do that too. So I'm going to go ahead, skip that one, and do this very last one. And that is my blue for now. Right, and the very last color that I have to work with before I recycle the colors that I've already used is purple. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple is the very last color that I have to work with. So look how cool this looks already by adding the color. It looked really cool just with the outlines, but when you add the color, it gives you a completely different effect. It really pops out. It looks amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead into this next triangle Right, I'm gonna leave this one blank because I have blue here, I don't want a color here. So I'm gonna go to the next one. Now for you, you can turn the paper around as you work. My paper is staying in the same place because I have it attached to the easel, but you can turn your paper around as you work. It actually makes it a lot easier if you turn your paper. Right, so that's my first one, and then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna skip the next one, and then I'm gonna come to this one. And again, at this point, I am actually using the wide angle of my marker because it gives me more color at one time. And my reach on this part of the paper is a little bit different than it was up top, so. Ah, okay, so now I'm gonna skip the next one. So white, purple, white, purple, white, purple. At this point, you are probably way ahead of me. Maybe you're a little behind what I'm doing. It does not matter wherever you are, take your time. The one thing I say is don't ever rush through your, um, your projects because you wanna take pride in what you're doing, right? So it's really important that you are actually taking your time with these projects. I'm moving quickly so you can know what to do, but on a given day, if I was working on this, I would be working and taking my time to make sure it's as neat as possible. It's not really so much about um, how neat it is, it's really about the process of creation and how you feel while you're doing it, right? It's more about the process than anything. Okay, and I know in class before, you know, I would start the um, I would start the session with journal entries, but they're going to be a little bit different this time around. I will tell you your journal entry at the end of each session, 
And I want to make sure you're taking the time um, at the end to write a journal, a journal entry. So put a date at the top of the paper like we did last time. And I'll describe this again at the end. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. But I'm going to give you your subject matter for your journal entry right at the end of this class. Right? So I have white, purple, white, purple, white, purple, white. And then I have this last section. Let me move over here that I'm going to go ahead and color purple. Right? I'm using the wide edge. I'm going pretty quickly to fill it in. And that is my purple. So now I officially have all six rainbow colors or colors of the rainbow in this piece. I can actually start all over here from red and it'll be kind of across. So if I did red, orange, yellow, green, I could get away with that. So I might just do that. Even though I want blue again, I can also do blue, green, right? So I could do blue, green, yellow, orange and i think that's what i'm going to do because i want more blue blue is my favorite color so i'm going to come up here now and i'm going to start with blue which is right across from this one now i'm going to leave this one blank because my red has color in it so this one needs to be blank so i'm going to come to the second second row that's what i'm going to call these the curved row and i'm going to go ahead and color this in blue right then i'm going to skip so white blue white blue I know at this point you have the pattern so I don't even need to keep announcing it but I know also as you color it could get a little confusing um, just because there are so many shapes so many rows involved and I want to make sure we're all on the same page so white blue white blue white blue And of course, I'm going to skip this next one, white. And then this little piece here is going to be blue. Right, so now I have blue. And then I said I'm going to come back to green. So I'm going to come here, blue, green yellow, orange. That way I'm not coming back into the same color I was working with before. So now I'm going to come here. Green is going to be here at the beginning. Right? Because remember, we're starting at the center always and we're going out from there. So green, white, green, white, green, white, green. Okay, so now the next color I'm gonna go into is yellow. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna skip this tip, right? Because this is green and there's gonna be a color here. So in between we need none. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna put yellow, skip. So white, yellow, white, yellow. White, yellow. white, yellow. So I have one left.
right? And I'm gonna make that one orange. So I'm gonna come in with my orange marker. This one is gonna start at the very beginning. So just like with our rows of triangle, right? Notice that with the rows, the same thing here in the center. It's color, white, colored, white, colored, white. So it basically goes around in a circle and has a color and then skips the same way it does in each row, right? So now I'm gonna come here, I have my orange, I'm gonna skip one, I'm gonna go ahead and add my orange here. And again, whatever way works for you as far as coloring, go for it. Colored pencils will take a little bit longer, but if that's what you wanna work with, that's what you have. Then go ahead and do that. I'm skipping this one. I'm gonna come in with orange here. gonna skip this one come in with orange here again if you're coloring on a table you can just turn your paper around I'm not able to turn my paper just because I have it on the easel for sake of your being able to see it but please feel free to turn your paper as you're coloring you have the freedom to do that Right, and then I'm gonna skip this one, and the very last one I have is down here, and I'm gonna go ahead and color this orange. Now, I'm going to leave mine this way, right? So I'm gonna leave mine with the white in between. If you want to look, if you want this to look even cooler, I'm gonna show you an example on mine, I'm just not gonna do it on my whole thing. If you wanna take some time either um, right after we right off you after you log off of here or if you want to take some time later on today or tomorrow you want to come back to this lesson and you want to keep going with it you can actually um, make this even more of an illusion by using one of the colors next to it so like with red I can use blue with orange I can use yellow you basically use one of the colors next to it and it will actually make it jump even more so instead of the white in between it'll be another color so if I want it to do red and orange, red and orange are very similar colors. So if I did it here, I'm gonna start the same way I did in the beginning, right? So instead of leaving this white now, I can come back and color that orange, right? And color this orange. Or you can do a different color altogether. So it, it's gonna be completely up to you how you go about doing this, but it does create a complete illusion. It kinda is one of those things you kinda look at and it makes your eyes go like, wait, what am, I, what am I seeing here? All right, so I can switch the color all together. So say I didn't wanna do orange and I wanted to do something else. You can go into all of these whites and change the color, right? I'm not gonna do that with you today because that'll take way too long, but if you wanna continue the lesson, you can go ahead and continue the lesson. Um, this is what I want you to write about in your journal. So get your journals out when you finish this and actually just get your journals out right now so you can write at least the prompt at the top of it and then I wanna make sure you fill it in later on. Um, I am encouraging you to send me pictures of your work. You can actually snap a picture of, the pic snap a picture of what you created with your phone or a camera, you could post it directly under this video, or you can send it to me email. So acob at lifebridgect.org is my email. You guys can send me pictures of your pictures. I would love to be able to share them with others so they could see the amazing work that you're doing. Um, for your journal entry, I also encourage you to write your journal entries. If you want to share your journal entry with me, you can also share your journal entry with me by just typing it up or taking a picture of it and sending it to me via email at acob at lifebridgect.org, right? I will be checking my emails, looking at all your amazing work. If you choose not to do it on the actual Facebook page, you could send it to me via email and I'll see it there as well. Okay, so you can continue to fill this in, but journals out, pencil or pen, whatever you're writing with, and at the top of that page, I want you to write 
what I appreciate most. And what that means is what I appreciate most and then dot, dot, dot. And, and under that, I want you to write right now in this time, in the time that we've been out of school, in the time that we've been out of um, the Young Scholars Program, what are the things that you're finding out you appreciate the most right now? Is it your family? Is it your bed? Is it food? Is it your health? Is it safety? I want you to think about the things that are most important to you. What do I appreciate the most? It could be a list. It can be an entire page. It could be a paragraph or a sentence. I just want you to take some time. Think about what is most important to you, what you appreciate the most. Write about that. You can share that on this feed too. You can actually just type up, I appreciate food the most. I appreciate sleep the most. I appreciate my teachers, my parents, my siblings, whatever it is you can think of that you appreciate. Go ahead and share that with us either on this feed or you can send it to me via email. Again, it's acob at lifebridgect.org. I look forward to seeing you guys again in a couple of days with a completely new lesson. I hope you are well. Stay well. Stay positive. We will be seeing each other again soon. Bye, guys.